Hey guys, got a whole handful of stuff here. Today we're going to be trying with the Nasset, the old Nasset blade, a razor in this case. And if you know what this is, this is an ABC Pocket Edition. Talk more about that later. It kind of is uh, like a, an old type from Gillette. All right, inside of it we're going to put the, the Nasset. I think this is shave 242. Yeah, we've got a one dot right there. And we're in the 240s now. So today is 242. And I realize that is uncommon if you're a new viewer of my channel. The brush we have today is a G Huck, Jeff Huck designed, uh, turned this handle. And, uh, and he has this White Knight knot. I think it's been discontinued, uh, but I'm not sure. A big 30 millimeter knot. I've used it once before. Last time I didn't soak it for very long. This time it has had an opportunity to be wet for quite a while. 15 minutes or something like that or more. And it's a two band knot and the two bands that have tips that do absorb water and become kind of jelly. I like to give those a little bit more soaking time than just three or four minutes. I don't know which kind this is. It did not des uh, develop gel tips when I used it the first time. So I don't think it's going to, but for finest badgers, I often will let them soak for a little bit longer. Uh, here is the, the Nasset blade. And you can see the three dots uh, over here near my fingertip is where the X used to be, but it's worn away with time and rinsings and things like that. All right, uh, so let's show you this ABC edition. I believe I've shaved with it once on my channel before, but it's got this basket weave. I think there were different patterns for the case, but this is the basket weave pattern, I believe. It's got a blade case, which I don't really need to use. It's got the head and, of course, the handle. Now, you can tell these for different, uh, they differ from the, if you were to just to see the razor in the wild, it differs from an old type. You can see the taper. The ball here is bigger, but it tapers starting where my fingers are and then gets smaller as it gets closer, closer where it connects on the head. And so it's, that makes it easier to identify these uh, out in the wild if maybe they have been... Uh, put thought of as an old type and old types are really common so 10 15 bucks you can get an old type but this guy's a lot more and uh and so is he silver i i don't really know um he's not tarnished so if he's silver he's lacquered you know uh this does have i think we're looking at a brass interior component because you can see kind of that color where the uh, handle does connect Here's what the top of the base plate looks like. Pretty normal top cap. Nice shine on this one. I don't know if this has been refinished or just taken excellent care of. So let's take the Nasset and I do like to put the dots for this blade only. I am carefully orienting it every time. I am only putting the dots toward the handle and not the other way around, because I'm very curious to find out if that makes a difference. Something I've learned is that if you're gonna use your blades 30 times or less, flipping, I don't think it matters at all. I don't think you need to flip your blade to try to even wear, because if I can get 242 uses out of it, then it's not really gonna matter too much if you flip yours uh, to try to get different wear out of it, is, is my opinion based on what thing what I'm going through now. Uh, 225 uses at 225. You can see I added a little bend in there right near the end. You can see the change in the reflection. It has it affects the shave a little bit. I can feel it, but not enough to I'm not gonna I don't think I'm gonna try to bend it some more. When I did drop it I did bend it back some but you know how metal goes. Sometimes if you bend it back too much you break it and that sort of thing. So I've gotten it back to a reasonable place. I think I'm going to leave it there for now. The soap. We're resuming our hard soaps tour. Took a break yesterday to, to try a new soap to me, the Oleo Jacmel. And man, that was an awesome scent. I rated that soap very highly because I really enjoyed the performance. Oleo's Duck Fat is a very good performing soap. But the scent just put it over the edge into my top level of favorites. So now we're going to go back to the hard soaps. Inside this old Taylor Bond Street container, I have a Gold Docks puck. 
and it's a sandalwood scent. Now, Gold Docks is one of those uh, European type makers that puts their uh, refill pucks out, kind of like Dr. Harris and uh, and some others in that tiny shape, the smaller puck, and it's rounded at the bottom, uh, maybe to fit some of those vintage containers or you know those vintage shaving mugs that have the space out the side for the brush and they have drain holes at the top to where you can, I don't know exactly how to use those. I've seen some people guess on e on YouTube. Um, I think some people just think you pull it, pull the soap off the top of those things, you use it, and then you put the soap back on the top of those mugs. And then the drain holes will just help make sure the soap doesn't sit in water. And so you don't really use the top of that. It looks like almost like a coffee carafe or a tea carafe. And you, you don't actually lather up on the top of that thing. Because most of the time, they don't usually have a lot of room. It's just enough to set the soap on there. So I don't think you're supposed to lather on top. But beneath it, I guess, is where you put the water. Maybe warm water to kind of dip your brush in or, you know, something to that effect. Um, and, uh, and so, hey, if you know how, if you know how the majority of people use those pieces from years ago. I'd love it if you uh, uh, told me. On, on, my, on the comments there. <clears throat> All right. I just got out of the shower. I did uh, clean with a glycerin soap. So that is my pre-shave for today. And we're going to, I have used this soap before, the sandalwood. It does have a soapy smell to it along with the sandalwood. So it's not super authentic. As I recall, it's a really good performer though. So we're touring my, my collection of hard soaps because I, I think they are really underrated if I do love Sterling and Barrister and Man and Black Ship Grooming and Noble Otter and Declaration Grooming and Southern Witchcrafts. I love all those cropes, all those artisan makers, and they are great guys. And the scents are amazing that they're able to put together, but there is something magical to me about a hard soap. I don't know. Even one with a light scent. And I am known for my desire for a medium strength scent that I can enjoy during the shave. If it's light and if it's one of those artisan makers, I will likely sell it away. But a lot of these hard soaps, I'll keep them around if they're light. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I know that they will last decades. They will not expire, basically. We've got pucks of Colgate and Burma Shave and Franklin Toiletries and Williams that are decades old and you can still whip up a great lather with them. Just the way hard soaps are, if they're made right. All right, so let's quit the jawing. This is a big brush. It holds a lot of water, look at all that. And I just already shook out some before I lifted it up into the camera. So I'm gonna shake out a lot of that. And as you can see, the puck still swims around in the bowl a little bit. Let's see if it's cemented itself in there. I may have to do something like hold it with a finger. Uh, what you can do if you're in this kind of situation, take a cheese grater, grate off the bottom or top of this soap and have some gratings, and then put the soap chunk back in here, and then push the gratings around to make up the difference, make up the gap, and then they'll seal right in there. All right, let's load for 40 seconds. Now, I hit 40 just now, so... We'll go to 20 on the next minute. Good, the soap puck is not disengaging from the bottom. I'm not gonna squeeze the container because I don't want it to pop the soap loose. This is a big knot. The, the tips aren't super soft. There are brushes out there with softer tips, but I really like the backbone. I really like the density and who knows? Uh, 15 years ago, this may have been the epitome of softness. And so it, they are, very, the tips are very soft. All right, well, good. The, the soap pug held in place. This is kind of what it looks like when you lather this guy in a small container. Uh, immediately, what I was able to bring up, as you can see, is kind of airy and bubbly. Not really too much of a concern at this point. Let me rinse off the, the threading and the tub by turning it upside down like that. All right. Uh, I am uh, intentionally loading a little bit longer than usual because 
I don't know if this razor is going to require the normal three passes, three plus passes, or if it's going to need four or five. Uh, because the NASA's old, and I am working through my different razors to see. I've already got a couple. The uh, I think it's the Wolfman WR2 at a 85 gap that works well with this blade. Just minor tugging on the first pass. And some guys complain about tugging on use number five of their blade. And, and so things are relative, I understand. And the super adjustable, the Black Beauty. It looks like this. This is the short handle version. And it shaves really well with this old blade. Just the right geometry for my face. Uh, if I were to give this blade to somebody else and they were to run through their collection, they could have a whole different set of razors that do well for them. Skin, hair, they're all different. Okay, so you can see this is not a very curvy arc. It's kind of a shallow arc. And so far, the shallow arc type razors I don't believe are usually being as not as kind. Uh, it may end up to be, I think I used a single ring and it was too inefficient. After four passes, I was still left with some stubble that just was a little, was not quite up to par. So I put that in my, nah, too mild section. This might be, go along the same way. Now, let me say you something. I love the handle here. I love the fact that it's narrow and thickens up because as you're holding it right here, it's a very, because it's thin, it's a very nimble razor. You can pivot it any way you want, any time you want. But because it gets wider toward the bottom, there's no fear that you're going to drop it. You just feel like you have an excellent grab on the razor. So I really like this design. All right, so we're about to mix our lather. What I do is throw a little water on my face before I do that. just to keep those whiskers hydrated. And let's take and just work this in. I got a feeling I'm gonna be adding water pretty soon. It's possible that this brush sheds water pretty easily and so I may need to leave a little bit more water in this one when I'm whipping up lathers, when I'm, uh, I meant to say when I'm loading up the brush. Uh, from the soap container. It could also be that this one was treated with, I'm just going to go ahead and put two teaspoons in right away. This one could have been treated with conditioner, hair conditioner. That is a common thought among many shavers out there. I've recently come into some info from some, some other educated shavers, the soap makers and things like that, chemists and something like that, where they have said that conditioners uh, may not be a good choice. And even shampoos, if the shampoo contains a conditioner, as many of them do. You think that, hey, it's animal hair. We use conditioner in human hair to keep it looking nice, to keep it, uh, to keep it healthy. So then it makes sense to use it on uh, your natural animal hair brushes. Makes perfect sense. However, you can think of human hair as show hair. You're not doing anything with it. You're not trying to make it be a brush. You're not trying to make it uh, work a lather on somebody's head. So human hair has a different purpose than the animal hair in a brush. The animal hair in a brush needs to absorb water, for instance, to, uh, and there's issues with the pH, things like that. And so you don't. Uh, there may be reasons where you don't want to use conditioner on a an animal hairbrush, especially with the types of brushes that need to absorb water to be able to work properly. Definitely don't want to use conditioner because it puts these silicone products, uh, silicone related products on your, on your brush fibers, preventing them from absorbing water. I'll try to remember to post in the description the uh, link to that uh, uh, a Reddit write up uh, Heather Melton from Zingari Man uh, seems to be a really uh, awesome classy gal and uh, she was part of that discussion. She's very educated in that. She uh, is a soap maker and, and other types of uh, things and so she's well educated. Also there's another guy, is it Aceer Blade, something like that? A 
I'm, I, I can't quite remember. He's the one that initially did the post and she disagreed with him on a few things and helped him to understand a few things. But by and large, he, he had a lot of good information himself. So I would definitely check that out. If I forget to put that in the description of this video, please uh, somebody post and remind me and I'll stick it in. So I am finding I'm almost going to get carpal tunnel because this brush is just so heavy. And I could probably help things by lowering the bowl a little bit, but I, I want you guys to see the lather as it, as it develops. I've just been working this guy. I put two teaspoons in and he's looking really good. He supports himself pretty well. And so often that's an indicator that we need to keep adding water, at least for to get it hydrated to my preferences. As I rinse the kind of scrap soap away from my fingers before I grab my syringe, I'm feeling how slippery it is. Feels great. Three teaspoons now in the soap. Slippery handle as usual. Uh, if I, I'm, I want to use this brush, figure out if I like the knot because if I do, I might have to put it in a different handle. Because this handle, I believe, is not very ergonomic for, for me. I don't think it would be too bad if the soap stayed away from the handle, but it doesn't. It's a short, stubby handle, and so it's, it gets in and amongst the soap every single time. And so this, as you might imagine, if you've been shaving for your long, this brush is probably better used by a face latherer. You're not going to have as much problem with the handle getting messy if you just lather on the face. This uh, smell is very nice. It is abandoning the sandalwood authenticity uh, zone and heading out toward a soapy zone, soapy type scent. So I would think of this more as a, a soapy a soapy scent with a sandalwood twist. I've now put four teaspoons total of water in this one. It is common for the hard soaps to need more water than the cropes because uh, the hard soaps have had those uh, that water cured out of the soap. They'll dry or have the soap sit out for a while. The hard makers do that. And so the water has a chance to leave. So you end up with a concentrated soap instead of something that's soft. Well, I'm really happy how this is coming and we may be there. It looks very hydrated. That tip collapsing on its own. See what it looks like. Ah, look at that long kind of stringy nature to it. Yeah. Let's go ahead and use this. Now, sometimes when you have that length of a stretch, then sometimes that means you've got a, a watery portion that's of your lather that's a little too wet relative to the other portions. And so I'm going to just mix for just a little while longer try to make sure we even everything out. All right. Looks terrific. All right, water on my face. I have a day and a half's worth of beard to shave off, maybe even more than that. So I may get some tugging. This may not be an accurate, well, I know I'm going to get some tugging. This may not be an accurate picture of how this razor is going to be. Water out of the beard. Let's just spread some around first from the sides of the brush. Then we can kind of start working it. I've noticed that 
this big brush tends to empty out the center pretty quick and then stuff gathers on the side and then falls away yeah this is, feels very good no scratch or you know any kind of prickle scritch or any of those words very soft It, it still splays pretty easily. Easy enough for me, so I'm very happy about that part of it. So right now we're just gonna make sure we give the hair some good cleaning. Wash that, wash those oils away. Much of that's already been done by the, the shower that I took, but yeah, this is a very nice comfy brush. Now let's go ahead and kind of, and see you can see a lot of the soap likes to hang around by the fingers. Fortunately, I've got a lot of it in, in the bowl, but let's just conserve some and kind of put it on the business area yeah I can feel the slickness here it's really nice all right ready to go hey Nasset how are you gonna work in this old old razor so these pocket editions can be quite, I mean, can be expensive. Not super expensive like a Wolfman or something, but they can be a little pricey. Well, I guess good ones in good condition maybe could fetch a Wolfman type price. Maybe rare ones, you know, that sort of thing. But they have these neat cases that they come in and I don't believe they're all that common. And I know that there are a few guys out there who, you know, try to collect them all. The case tells you a little bit of information. On the back it says Pocket Edition, Gillette Safety Razor. And then it goes through a bunch of uh, maybe patent numbers or something like that. It says King Gillette on the bottom. So obviously can't be as easily read as some of the ones out there. I am getting a little bit of tug, but it's really not too bad. Definitely keeping with against the grain for now. All right, a little rinse. I still feel quite a bit of stubble. As in not too much was was knocked off. So let's, I'm gonna do another with the grain pass. And it illustrates a principle of don't press down more if you feel like you're not getting a good cutting action. See now this is very comfortable. I did I may feel a bunch of stubble, but I definitely did some some good hair removal. If it uh, if I'm not feeling tuggy right now, this I do feel the blade just a little, but it's entirely shaving appropriate. It feels like I'm you know shaving with a blade that's pretty young. And there we go, nice quick pass. And a little rinse. Some areas I still feel some stubble. More than I usually do after two passes. That's alright. If it's, if it's close, then that's great. That tells us something about this razor. I may learn that this razor is just a little bit too mild for this old blade. 
But as you can see, uh, this is a nice lather. It's very slick. It's giving me very good protection. I think my cheeks are getting shaven pretty well. Except maybe this side over here. This is interesting. I think I feel a little bit more stubble over here. But like I was saying, don't bear down more. If you're having trouble with a spot, just relather and hit it again. Maybe change your direction. I know I had to work for several months you know, for this area of my beard to figure out which directions I should come from for the best shave. It really took a long time. You can see I'm feeling nice residual slickness on my face. This is a good soap. Protective. It may not have as hard soaps. A lot of times don't have the nice skin goodies. That some of the cropes have. Now I believe, didn't I just do three passes? And now I don't really feel any stubble. So it just took a little bit longer. Let's hit it one more time. Well, why don't we inspect first? Yeah, we've still got some length there on the trouble spot. Let's see if we can hit that again. I may not need to do my face though. Plenty of lather available to me here. How's my face? I'll go ahead and do it. With a light touch, a lot of times you can shave multiple areas a lot more than you think you need to because that light touch keeps that irritation down. Keeping a light hold on my razor so that it moves over my skin and not through my skin. I don't want it to try to iron out any bumps. I want it to glide over and maybe even be ineffectual on a bump because later on I'll feel that and then come at it in the right way instead of powering through it. This is not something we want to power through. Very nice, and a little touch up here. I'll just grab some lather from the bowl. Hit that again. No problem in doing that. I think we've got a good shave. So yeah, it took, was it four passes? Maybe five, I lost count. All right, now let's do a real rinse. Yeah, so even though I got it down to where it felt pretty good, still see some, some length, kind of a general, uh, more of a general shadow than I usually do uh, with this razor. So it is a little bit less efficient, but comfortable. It was, and it was a one and a half day uh, growth. So it handled it pretty well, light tugging on that first pass. And then it just didn't manage to get super close. I could probably do more passes, but I just don't feel like it. Uh, and I may not even be able to, uh, to get that, but my face feels great. It did a great job there. That's the easiest part, I guess, for the razor to do. Let's see what we have underneath for a shave balm. Well, this is a day shave, so let's pick something that uh, other people in my family like. Executive Man, which is Sterling's version of the Creed Aventus scent. Very popular, and I can see why. It's just, I like it too. And there we go. Sometimes I put it on thick, and so you'll see some whiteness on my face, but it only takes a few minutes for that to absorb. Excellent, excellent. So let's take a look at our lather right quick. Squeeze the lather up out of the brush. So this is the 
copious amounts of brush lather. And then we have some more left from the bowl. Yeah, this has got a nice creamy feel to it. A lightness as well. The slickness here is a, like a thin, a really thin oil. Very nice. It's not a, uh, a super buttery, thicker, a thicker slick type of slickness, like maybe sterling or something like that. Uh, but it's, it's, it's really nice. You can tell it's going to be protective. And it's, this is well hydrated. Let's get it all into a, <laughs> you can see there, get it all kind of into a ball. We can see the droop of the weight of the water. It's got plenty of water to, to be hydrated. It gives you a nice slick lather. That is just tremendous. Feels great. Yeah, I'd classify that as enjoyable and luxurious. This little kind of unassuming puck. And uh, Gold Docks, I should have mentioned this from the beginning, it's a, I believe it's a German soap, because the word Docks is German for badger. And so, Gold Badger, Golden Badger, is the uh, kind of the general idea there. So that's a, I mean, that's a winner in my book. I could easily shave with this soap every day. The scent, yeah, it's kind of like a general soapy scent with a little bit of the sandalwood twist to it. However, it has sat around in my den for quite some time. I believe it's been covered up most of the time. So, um, uh, so, but it probably has lost a little bit just due to, I probably had it sitting around for two years. Or maybe a touch longer. So, uh, it's the fact that it's got some scent may be a miracle in the first place. So that's a good soap. That's a really enjoyable soap. All right, I'm gonna clean up. So here we go, after a good towel stropping. This is a nice, soft brush. Uh, it felt better today than it did the first time. Uh, we'll keep using it and just seeing how things go. It's dense, but not quite as dense as maybe a Declaration Grooming brush of recent make or something like that. And, and I'm glad, because otherwise this guy would have too much backbone for me. So. Looking forward to some more shaves. This is a heavy handle, and there's you have to hold it with your fingertips. There's not there's no tucking tucking it in anywhere to get some good leverage, and so your fingertips have to fight the slipperiness to hold on to this heavy item, and that may be its weak point for me, but we shall see. Well, a little too mild in this. Uh, instance with this old blade, but I think it, it did give me a respectable shave. So if I needed to go to work with this kind of shave, I don't think it would be a problem. As always, I'm taking the blade over here and tapping it on my washcloth just to kind of get the water off. And then I'll uh, put it away. I believe we gave it four teaspoons of water, which is Maybe a little bit on the low side for a hard soap. Maybe about average, it depends. But uh, a lot of people say that you need to use more soap with a big brush. This is a 30 millimeter brush. I'm not really finding that to be the case. I think that's just for people who overload um, because a, uh, a 30 second lather is kind of typical for me with my 26 millimeter brushes, 22, 24 millimeter brushes, so. Um, I think it's, it doesn't have to be bigger. All right, well, I really enjoyed that shave. The brush was comfy. Um, the, the soap is terrific. It's uh, not well known here in America. I don't really see too many guys using it online. And, um, and I can see why. It's European. It's kind of small. And it's, uh, but in terms of performance, it's, it's just really good. It, uh, it does uh, compete. Um, higher than its pay grade and since it's hard even though it's a smaller puck I think it's gonna last you a good long time so I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be worth your money as long as it doesn't take too much money to get it from Europe 
All right, well, it's a recommended soap for me. I mean, we've got so many great soaps. The only fault of this soap is the scent. It's just a, uh, if you just want an even keeled, soapy kind of scent, there's a lot of them that have that though, with a slight sandalwood bent to it, then this, this might be your guy. Uh, or if you have a local pharmacy that carries this brand, if you're in Europe or Germany or something like that, then it might be just a great option for you because it's convenient and cheap and uh, ready for you right away. All right, now, I hope there's been something in this video that's going to help you out. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. You take care.